<laughs> Gonna tell you a story not long ago. I on a mountain in Idaho, in Idaho. You're a living free. Don't sell no shotgun, no deputy. I'm going to talk just a little bit, but we're mostly going to do music, and then what, what the format's going to be, we're going to stop between songs and talk about it a little bit, meaning all of us, you know, questions you have, things you notice, ideas you're thinking about as these songs come, but I want to give it a little bit of context. Um, I, uh, the, the beginning of this story is we have a program at Linfield, and can everybody hear me? Can my teacher voice loud enough? Um, uh, the students at Linfield that are studying the humanities have the opportunity to come a couple weeks early to this program called AHA, Arts and Humanities in Action. And what they do for this program is they take the, they, they study something and do a bunch of different projects in a bunch of different disciplines. And what they've done the past few years is they've looked into the case of Charity Lamb. And, and I'll talk a little bit about Charity Lamb, but Charity Lamb was the first Oregon woman to be convicted of murder after putting an axe through her husband's head. Um, and, she, um, and she spent the rest of her life at the penitentiary. Actually, she ended up at the insane asylum at the end of her life. It's kind of a sad story, to be honest with you. Um, but when they told me they were going to do something on Charity Lamb, I read a bunch of stuff on Charity Lamb, and it was a, it was a bluegrass ballad. I mean, Charity Lamb, for heaven's sakes, you know, a name like that, that totally just was, just was there. And so I, after reading a bunch of stuff, I went home and I, and I wrote this song, and uh, these guys have helped me put it together and, and make it work. Uh, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, and, and we're going to play that last in our set, but we're going to play other murder ballads, and I want to talk about the murder ballad tradition generally um, first. And often the murder ballads you hear our jilted lover kills someone and hangs, right? It's usually, it's usually the man who kills the woman and then is on the gallows or something and, and feeling bad for what he's done or, or something like that. But there are a bunch of different kinds of murder ballads in folk tradition. Um, I don't know why those were the ones I'd run across most often, but as I was doing some research, there are all kinds of murder ballads. And I, I found this book by Olive Willie Burt called, called American Murder Ballads. And she lists, I like this book for a couple of reasons. She's doing academic work in the 50s when academics actually wrote in ways that you could read. Um, <laughs> which is one of my critics, one of the, my criticisms of uh, my, my discipline. But she's got all these different categories of, of murder ballads. She's got friends and relations, jealousy and unrequited love and madness. That's probably the one we hear the most. The profit motive, um, for the love of God, a matter of pigment, law and price, a way of life, and any excuse will serve is a <laughs> kind of catch-all um, category. And she says some interesting things um, about this. And I'm not going to bore you with a ton of it, but I just want to give you a little bit of an idea um, she was a folklorist who was who grew up in Salt Lake City, which is where I grew up, which made me even more interested in that. And um, she was very interested in true, true crime. She taught school and she worked for newspapers. And she said about murder ballads, she said, the one thing, it was real. It was the stuff which literature's made, the old Scotch ballads. And she's talking about her uncle who used to come to her house. So. Sorry, I'm going to back up and give you more Mormonism than you want. But, but, but um, the Mormons have a, year, a semi annual conference where everybody comes to Salt Lake to this conference. And she had this old um, Scottish uncle who would come to conference and stay with them and sing these ballads. Um, and, and so she says, those old Scotch ballads have come down through the years as an expression of the life and customs and of the time. They have reality and permanence, and I am glad they were part of my bringing up. And she also says, um, both sung and printed verses retold crime in detail, and often pretending to be words of the slayer himself, they pointed out the path of murder that led to the gallows. And finally, she says, as such, they are the voice of the people speaking authoritatively upon the tragic but very real aspects of our civilization. Um, and as I read this and as, I, as I've listened and loved murder ballads, often murder ballads 
where the actions that take place are things I object to. I'm not, I think murder's bad, just between us. Um, and, and so I thought, why do they appeal so much? Why do we love murder ballads? And maybe you don't, but, uh, but there's so many people who do. And as I was thinking about that, um, one, I think that we've all felt jealous. I think we've all felt angry. Um, we haven't acted on it, but there's something that we can relate to in the jealous or jilted lover that we see, even though we wouldn't go to the extreme as that, as that person has, we see that um, uh, in ourselves. There's something fascinating about crime. I mean, could there be a worse crime than murder? Um, and even though we're, uh, it's, it's, it's abhorrent and, everything, and all of that, just think of all the true crime podcasts and the true crime series that have great ratings. I mean, human beings are very interested in crime and in true crime. And these murder ballads are kind of a folk way that we have dealt with that in the past. Um, they were a folk way that this came into the tr tradition and they were sung in the homes um, and that kind of a thing. And I did some more, as I was doing some more research, I found another article by um, my good friend Olive Woolley Birch. And Wooly, by the way, is a real big Mormon name. Um, the <laughs> uh, the Woolies broke off from the mainstream Mormon church and started a uh, fundamentalist church down in Short Creek, Utah. That was one of the things the Woolies did. Um, but they go way back all the way to uh, pioneer times. And she, she's got a, an article called Murder Ballads of Mormondom. Um, this is back when when Mormons call themselves Mormons. They've changed that recently, but I grew up there. I grew up as a Mormon. I'm not one anymore, but I can't, I'm not giving that up. I like that. I like, so I claim it. Um, and um, one of the things, one of the murder ballads here that I thought was so interesting is a murder ballad that was written about the Hans Mill Massacre. And the Hans Mill Massacre is, holds this huge space in kind of the Mormon imagination. Now let me just read this real quick paragraph. The Han Mill Massacre on October 30, 1838, was rich in the elements that go into making of a ballad. Three days before the tragedy, Governor, Governor Lilburn Boggs of Missouri had issued an extermination order. And this was when he said, shoot Mormons on sight. It was legal in Missouri to shoot Mormons on sight. Um, the Mormons must be treated as enemies and must be exterminated or driven from the state if necessary for public peace. On this autumn afternoon, some 240 Missourians, fighting on their own hook, descended upon 30 Mormon families gathered at Hans Mill at Shoal Creek in Caldwell County. The band led by William O. Jennings and Nehemiah Comstock was mostly on horseback. The men reined up on the east bank of the creek, and one of them yelled, all who wish to save themselves run to the blacksmith shop. David Emmons, leading the, leading the saints, that's what Mormons call themselves, leading the saints, ran out waving his hat, crying, peace, peace, but the mob came on. The Mormons, thinking the suggestion came in good faith, ran to the blacksmith shop. The mob surrounded the little building and began to shoot through the cracks between the logs where there was no chinking. When they thought that all were, um, when they thought they all were dead, the Missourians entered the shop there they found 12-year-old Sadrus Smith, who had crawled under the bellows for safety. The boy was dragged out, and William Reynolds, one of the mobsters, shot off the top of the youngster's head, leaving the skull empty and dry while the blood and branch of the murdered child were spattered all over the wall. The murderer later boasted of his deed, and giving details, uttered the sentence infamous to Mormons. Nits make lice. If he'd lived, he'd have become a Mormon. And this, the, this appealed to me, not only the violence and the terribleness, but I am sure I am related to, to Sardra Smith. I've been told all my life my relatives were at Han, at Han uh, Mill. Um, I have Smiths on both sides of my line. They go all the way back to the founding. And so it, for me, it feels personal, but it's also this interesting frontier story. And um, Eliza R. Snow, who, who wrote a bunch of Mormon hymns and a bunch of poems, uh, wrote a murder ballad called The Slaughter of the Saints at Shoal Creek. And um, she goes through some of those gory details and that kind of thing. So these murder ballads deal with all kinds of things. Um, uh, I think the only thing in common is murder and ballad. Um, the, the, as far as the subject matter is what took place and where and how and that kind of thing, um, there's, a, there's a large variety. And so, um, 
I, so what we're going to do today, let me actually, before we start playing, let me also talk a little bit about Charity Land. How many of you guys have heard of Charity Land before? Yeah, there was a program here um, that my colleague Lisa Waterwitz, I think, is the one who talked about Charity Lamb. And Charity Lamb um, is an interesting case because Charity Lamb and her husband Nathaniel came west and settled on, um, on the Clackamas River. And it was a long, abusive relationship. Um, he, was, he, he was abusive and... Um, there was love triangles. He was um, having an affair, it looks like, and planning to run off and leave her high and dry. Her daughter was having an affair with someone else and, 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 and that this guy didn't like. The mother was trying to help the daughter get out um, with this guy that had moved to Cal California, although the guy was not much of a great guy, but it, if, it was better than, I guess, being in the, that violent home. And um, one day, um, Charity Lamb just got tired of it and Nathaniel Lamb came home from a bear hunt with a bear and sat down to dinner and up behind him walks Charity Lamb and picks up an ax and gives him two whacks on the head. And um, the problem is he didn't die for a week. And so he was able to testify against her, uh, which made things worse. And um, when she was, she immediately left and she ran to one of the neighbor's houses and they found her sitting on the porch in a neighbor's house and when she was found, she said, didn't mean to kill the critter. That sh um, I only intended to stun him. <laughs> so apparently, um, uh, it was quite a stunning that she did. And um, Nathaniel Lamb dies. The, the family breaks up. Um, she ends up in the penitentiary. She's one of the first cases where they pled temporary insanity. And, this, and because of the domestic abuse and because of the complicatedness of this case, um, she should have been executed. She should have been put to death. This was a capital crime. Um, this was something, you know, this was something uh, that most people would hang for. But they put her into the penitentiary and she spent um, the rest of her life, well, she was in the penitentiary and then she ended up in, uh, in uh, an insane asylum. So she had a kind of a sad and terrible and difficult life. And reading that story, it's a terrible story. But you want to write a song, right? <laughs> you read a story like that, and you want to write a song. And so the last song we're going to perform tonight is going to be Charity Lamb. Oh. But we are going to start with some <coughs> other murder ballads. And what we want to do is we want to play them and then see what you guys think about them. What do you guys think about the story? What do you guys think about what's going on? And then we'll play another one, and we'll just see how that goes. Does that sound like a reasonable plan? Good to me. OK. <laughs>
kids on Ruby Ridge, please don't shoot me down, don't shoot me down, don't shoot me down. Thank you. So, what what did you guys notice about that song? What what stood out to you? What questions do you have? What ideas do you have? What comments do you have? Did he ever really shoot him? Uh, that that's on a real incident. Yeah, at Ruby Ridge. Yeah, they, it was a terrible incident, actually. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah. So the words are terrible, but it's upbeat, right? It's this happy song about a terrible incident. Yeah, for sure. A lot of bias As in, a racial type stuff? in that song yeah. in what way because that um, that's interesting I hadn't thought about that it could be you know this guy was a this guy was a uh, um, uh, he was he was a survivalist and a prepper up there in Idaho, and um, the he did some arms deals, some arms sales that they didn't like, and the FBI came, FBI came in and it just kind of went out of control. It just kind of um, uh, got out of control, is what happened on that. Yeah, yeah, good. Other Way over to the left. What, to the left. Way over to the left. Way. Oh. I think they did. I haven't. I haven't watched it, but. Yeah, I think they did a documentary. Yeah, good. Other comments or ideas about that? Back to this comment here, one of the things that always stood out to me is, it's this upbeat song, right? And, and it's this terrible thing. And often you're gonna have this juxtaposition of the music itself and, um, and the message. Although on this one, we don't. Should we do Long Black Veil? Okay, this... You may have heard in G, uh, Johnny Cash does this song. A lot of other people do this song. I think Lefty Frizzell wrote it. Um, and this is a different kind of murder ballad. Um, and uh, if you, when Roseanne Cash and Johnny, when Johnny Cash was dying, Roseanne Cash had him write down the hundred most important country songs. And um, she's been making albums from that, and they're really good albums. But this was one of those songs.
Different about what's different about that song? What's that? The music matches the story. It's not about the murder. It's not about the murder, right? In fact, the murder—he doesn't commit a murder. Uh, um, somebody else does, right? And um, why doesn't he? Why is he hung? <laughs> Protecting her, right? He's 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 fooling around with his best friend's wife. And if, he, if, if that was the alibi that, he, that he's not willing to give to protect her. Um, there's something else that's unique about that murder ballad. Where's he speaking from? The grave, the grave right? So he's, he's dead, um, singing this from the grave. And, um, and that kind of... So, again, this is, not, this is not a ballad about something that's, that, that we admire, adultery and, um, and uh, false you know, execution. Um, why does it appeal to us? At least it appeals to me. I've always liked that song. Why does it appeal to us? Well, you're not there yet. Not there yet. <laughs> Unrequited love. Unrequited love, yeah. Yeah. It has a certain level of empathy that I feel other murder ballads don't. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah, I think it does have a certain number, uh, level of empathy. Yeah. It's a song about honor, too. It is. Even though he's cheating, which is not so honorable, <laughs> he does honor the fact that he doesn't want her to suffer. And his, and his friend. And, or his friend to suffer. Right. right. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Other comments? Yeah, I, I just, there's a twist to it in that first verse. That yeah. The first time I heard it, I like, Yeah. Yeah, so good. Good. Okay, we are gonna. I gotta look at the list. Sorry. Um, should we do? Uh, do you want to do Willow Cry, Buenas Noches, and then Whiskey, whiskey and My Whiskey and Charity Land? Yeah. Okay. This is another. This is another contemporary ballad. It's by. Um, do any of you listen to Chris Stapleton? He's a country singer that's pretty popular. Um, he used to be. He used to be with a bluegrass band called the Steel Drivers, and this is one of the Steel Drivers tunes, um, and it's called Willow Cry, and this is a very traditional uh, murder ballad, and, and we haven't practiced in a few weeks. I think we got this down. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll keep it there. One, two, three. Ah! Uh -huh. 
That's a more traditional story. What's the story? I don't know. It had a good beat, though. Had a good beat. <laughs> so the music kept you going. He seems kind of happy that he did it. He does seem happy that he did it, right? He's going to be hung or hanged if I knew the language. Um, but but he doesn't seem regretful necessarily. He says, "There's no forgiveness for that thing that I have done." But it doesn't seem confessional or sad. It's just facing the reality of it. Yeah. What did he do? Yeah, he shot the, his, his wife and her lover, both, right? I felt better when the blood was on my hands. Yeah. So that's terrible, but we like it. <laughs> right? Um, and I think it goes back to that feeling of we, we, we wouldn't act that way, but we have felt that anger, we felt that jealousy, we felt that, that kind of emotion. Yeah, good. Other comments on that one? Yeah, I mean the refrain, won't you bury me, you know, where my family lies, right? Um, he wants to be with his family, even in death. There's some comfort to him lying next to his family in the, in the family plot. Yeah. Something that came up for me was, you know, you have those feelings and the thoughts, okay? Yeah. And when you act on them, you put yourself in a different place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas if you had the thoughts before, they're there, but until you act on them, then it's a totally different. Yeah. So I'm what the music was saying. I, my family and being with them, even though I've done this, I regret having done this, but here and there. Yeah. That's the price I paid for what I did. Yeah, it's kind of like, I, it, and it's almost as if I knew this would happen and this was the price and that's just it. I knew the course of action. Yeah, yeah, good. Good. So, do you think it'd be sat satisfying if you got away with it? Would the song be as satisfying uh, no. to listen to? No. No. I think we kind of need to have somebody punished for this stuff, you know? Yeah. That's another part of what makes us feel good. Mm. Justice is served. Yeah. So, this next song, um, uh, Dave Porch is going to sing this next song, and I'll let you introduce it, Dave. Um. <laughs> Well, I always refer to this song as Red Dresses. It's a uh, Dwight Yoakam tune, but it's uh, the actual name is Buenas Noches from a Lonely Hotel Room. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure where we got that from, but um, we're going to throw it out there. Dave, are you going to play along? I am. Right. I was just looking what the next song was. Such sweet life. 
wore red dresses Left the wounded behind Song, which is yeah, kind of a different song. thing, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What else do you guys notice about that song? Very premeditated. This guy's awful, <laughs> right? I love that song, and this guy's terrible. Yeah. You can feel his pain, which doesn't justify his actions, but you can feel the pain. Anything else you guys notice about that? It is sad. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you feel terrible, right? Like, yeah. And and something when music makes you feel terrible, it makes you feel better in some weird way, right? That's what the blues is about in some weird way. Um, the other thing, you know, we did this we did this presentation for that group of AHA students, and one of the students pointed out um, that the woman in there is probably a prostitute. Um, and if you follow the lyrics. Um, which does not justify anything, that's not at all what I'm saying. I'm just saying that's part of it, that um, the, the story is him offering to marry her and her not wanting to go away from that life, and even when they have a, a child and, and he can't take it, which again is not justifying anything, but that's a, kind of a subtle part of that story. Everything from the red dress to um, the other actions in the story. The other thing that, I pick, that, that is interesting to me is he shoots her, and the next line is, she wore red dresses. So you get the blood in the dress, right? You get that image um, as, as that goes. And if you've ever seen Dwight Yoakam do it, he, he doesn't quite do it as well as Dave, but, um, <laughs> but he, usually has, he usually has an accordion and he's got some kind of um, very south of the border instrumentation and, and rhythm and, um, and that kind of thing. So it's a really interesting performance. Um, almost as interesting as this one, but, but <laughs> interesting. Yeah, good. Other comments on that? Uh, what do you think? Well, he, it's called Buenos Noches from a Lonely Hotel Room, so I'm going to say yeah. 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 I, I picture like a dusty southwestern town. Mm -hmm. You know, and he's at a at something a little less luxurious than a Motel Six. <laughs> <laughs> and the neon light is flickering on and off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the yeah exactly. Okay, so this will this is our last song. Um, uh, second last. To your relief, second last. What are we missing? Whiskey. Oh, this is our second last. Here's another song. Sorry, it could have been over. Could have been over. So. Um, uh, First break, second break, or second first first break, second break. 
Okay. I don't First know. break, second break. First break, second break. He's I mixing it up. This is cool, and this is one, another song that's really happy, that's terrible. Um, and I, you guys are, I would appreciate it if you sang along with us. Um, the, the, the chorus goes, I put some whiskey in my whiskey. I put some heartache in my heart. I put my boots on the old dance floor. I put three rounds in my 44. <laughs> so do you, so, so um, if you guys can join us when we get to the chorus, um, and we start with the chorus, you can join us right from the beginning. Love. 
Poor Eleanor, she dies every time. Oh, so how about that song? That song's a little different than the others in a couple of ways, but what do you guys notice? <laughs> and it's, yeah, we, we sing along and, what's that? You bet, I heard you, you were great. You were really good. The, yeah, the harmony was fantastic. Yeah, um, what, so, what else, what else do you notice besides the amazing singing coming from the back corner? He never went to trial. Never went to trial, what did he do? Laid on the railroad tracks, right? Um, put on a Sunday black and laid on the railroad track, right? Yeah, so that's Don't how he Uncle paid Jack. for it. After he drank some Uncle Jack. Uh, yeah. Um, how, about, how about that surprise in the second time you sing the chorus? Yeah. You know, you think it's going to be three rounds in my 44 and it's three rounds in my Eleanor, um, which, uh, which is kind of a surprise and, and, a, and a jolt when you yeah, listen to that song. I know, right? It's it's discordant. There's, you know, it's it's not right. I agree with you. Yeah, you know the terrible thing. I don't sing. I sing, you know, a proportion of the songs we all he sing. He all the murder. I have all the murder balance. I don't know why that's the case, but seriously, it's like I don't Actually, know what that Dave, says about me. We know. I'm well. Yeah. We're not telling. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, here's this is our last song. Um, this is about Charity Lamb, the woman who put an axe in her husband's head um, out in Central Oregon. Um, not Central Oregon, out in Clackamas. When Charity was just a maid In her father's house she stayed Every man in Clackamas County came to call They all came wearing a Sunday best She played coy but was impressed By Nathaniel Lamb who stood above the mall In his frock coat of raven black his dark curls combed smartly back He offered her his calloused farmer's hand He had a house he'd built with skill And deep rich bottom land to till Soon that fair young maid was Mrs. Lamb Charity Lamb Charity Lamb
20 years he came home sore for 20 years his fish he bought all those years had finally took their toe while he sat at supper time she approached him from behind and with an axe she opened up his skull Thanks so much for listening. We're the Bootleg Jam. Um, if we play around town, we'd love to see you guys out. Um, when we play, we usually post it on our Facebook page. Um, so if you follow it, you'll get a notification if you're interested in hearing us again. And if you're not interested in hearing us again, don't go there. <laughs> you know, and you won't ever have to hear us again. So anyway, you guys have been a great audience and appreciate the participation and thank you very much. Want to do drink a dark whiskey? We got it. That's as happy as it gets. That's as happy as it gets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's do drink a dark whiskey. Yeah. I was gonna say hard times, but that's not happy again. Yeah. So we better do drink a dark whiskey. Let's let's do two hard times and then that one. Can we do a sad one and then a happy one, or let's let's do let's do hard times and then let's do drink a dark whiskey. This is one of our older songs. It was written in 1876. Stephen Foster, you may have heard of him. (laughs) I'm not Dave Sumner. (laughs) Lucky for you.
sigh that is wafted above the troubled waves. It's a wail that is heard upon the shore. It's a dirge that is murmured around the lowly grave. Oh, hard times come again no more. It's the song beside the Okay, let's drink some dark whiskey and go home. <laughs> I mean, most of our songs, in fact, all of our songs are about cheating, killing, drinking. No, we got some. And we have got some repentance too. Yeah, we do. That, that we have. And we, why don't we do that? Let's do "I Saw the Light." Let's finish with that. Yeah. I think that's what. Yeah, we're you guys doing. might know that one. Yeah. We need a little Jesus after that, yeah. right? <laughs> one, two, three, four. Praise the Lord, I saw the light.